Hello children, welcome to the part 3 of our chapter Treasure Island, our adventure. Where has our adventure reached? Now, Jim, you remember, they are all on board. The ship is sailing beautifully and it's gone almost to our destination. But Jim was feeling hungry, so for searching for an apple, he went to the kitchen and heard Long John Silver saying something to his colleagues. Now what? Or I may say crew at the ship. What did he hear and what happens after that? Let's find out from now. While hidden inside ate where inside the kitchen, he overheard a conversation between Long John Silver and the ship's coxswain. What is coxswain? It is a petty officer in charge of the boat. The, because Long John Silver had got the entire team, he was speaking to a boy that was working with him. In which Silver boasted of his piracy with Captain Flint, who had died of drink and of his plan to kill the skipper, the squire and the doctor once the treasure was found. So he spoke about Captain Flint, his ex-captain. Okay, so this was the guy who was working with Captain Flint. And what was he discussing? He was discussing that he is going to kill who all? He is going to kill squire, skipper and the doctor. He is going to kill everyone after the treasure was found. Yes, Jim was terribly afraid he would be found out. But just then a cry rang out that rose the entire ship for in the moonlight land had been sighted. They had sighted the land. It was almost there. Jim was very afraid what's going to happen now. He's going to be killed. Everyone's going to find out. The next morning under Long John Silver's expert guidance he claimed he had visited the island before on a trading ship. The Hispaniola found a safe anchorage in an almost landlocked channel to the south of the island. So at the south of the island, they anchored the ship. Okay, they anchored uh, Hispaniola and Jim, Long John Silver, he, uh, the, so he had an expert guidance. What did he say? He said that he has visited the land before. With whom had he come actually? Captain Flint. He said, I have come to the land before and I know every part of it. So come, I will show you. Jim secretly warned Captain Smollett, the squire and the doctor of Long John Silver's treacherous plan, the witty bad plan. He already made who aware? He told the captain, the squire and the doctor. He told them what he overheard last night. The captain said that for the time being, they should pretend they knew nothing. They said, okay, let's pretend, let's uh, act as if we don't know anything. But they knew everything, isn't it? As there were only seven of the 26 people aboard the ship that they could rely upon, the odds were stacked against their survival. Now, there were how many people on the ship? 26. Out of them, only seven they could have trusted. So, Jim remarked that the treasure island had a brooding. What do you mean by brooding? threatening, very threatening, menacing air. Uh, Jim said that this, uh, when you come to a place, you don't feel good, right? Sometimes you feel that there's something wrong here. So Jim felt something like that when he came to the treasure island. He didn't know about treasure, said the doctor, but it was a pound to a penny that malaria lurked in the island's steamy marshes. There was a lot of malaria spread in that island, lots, okay? Now, uh, Long John Silver did not know where the treasure was. Who had the map? They had the map, right? So he did not know where the treasure was. Now that the ship was at anchor, the crew became very agitated and surly. Fearing they would mutiny straight away, Captain Smollett told them they could take the rest of the day off. Now everyone was getting restless because now finally the destination has arrived. The ship is anchored. So everyone was feeling what are they going to do now? What are they going to do? And where is the treasure? We want to see the treasure. So everyone was getting agitated and restless. Okay. So what did Captain Smollett said? They said okay you are tired. You can take the day off for today. Long John Silver who had done his best to calm things down led a party of sailors ashore. But six of their number were left aboard to guard the ship. So what did he do? He took everyone and kept a party. And six of them were left to the ship to take care of the ship. And keep an eye on the captain and those who were not part of the treacherous plot. So only the people who were part of the plot were taken out. Others were left in the ship. Acting more on instinct than anything else, Jim hid himself aboard the boat that rowed ashore and as soon as the coast was clear, made a run for the shelter of the nearby undergrowth. What did he do? 
he ran from the boat and went to the island and took shelter somewhere very safe. He was delighted that no one appeared to have seen him, no one saw him going out and soon began to enjoy the unfamiliar feeling of being all on his own. He was really happy with for a change being by himself. An hour or so later, Jim was surprised by voices. After some time, he could hear someone. He hid and watched as a little way off, Long John Silver tried to persuade a member of the crew to join the mutiny. What was Long John Silver doing? He was telling some more people to join, to join the, uh, the thing that was he was going to do. He was going to get treasure. When the fellow refused and started to walk away, the old pirate drew a long knife and stabbed him in the back. Okay? Terrified, Jim slipped away and ran for his life. He ran until his legs gave out. He got very scared when he saw Long John Silver uh, putting knife under someone's back. He got very, very scared and afraid. Then, when he stopped to catch his breath, he found himself facing a wild-looking man. Wild. Uh, when people are living in this island and all that, they don't go to take a shower or comb or cut their nails. They look wild. They look bad. Dressed all in rags. He was not even wearing proper clothes. He was wearing all torn clothes. I am poor Ben Gunn, said the wild-looking man. Who was he? What was his name? Ben Gunn. And I haven't spoken with a Christian these three years. So for three years, Ben Gunn was on this island abandoned. He had not spoken to anyone for these three years. Ben Gunn told Jim he had been on Captain Flint's ship when the treasure was buried. What did he say? He said, I was on the ship when the treasure was buried. The wicked pirate had taken six men ashore with him to hide the booty and murdered them all so its location remained a secret. So he said when Captain Flint came to this island, I was there. What did he do? He took six men to help him to bury the treasure and killed all of them so they should not tell everyone else where the treasure is buried. What is treasure called again? Booty in pirate language. Ben had returned on another ship to look for the treasure three years back. But when they could not find it, his shipmates left him marooned on the island. So this fellow also, Ben Gunn, came back with his friends to get the treasure out. But they could not find it. They didn't know where it was because they did not even have the treasure map, isn't it? So they couldn't find it. So other shipmates left him all alone on this island. How sad, right? Marooned again is abandoned in the island. So Ben Gunn was alone in this island for three years. And he also came for the treasure. Meanwhile, the doctors, the squire and Captain Smollett had also decided to go exploring. They also said, okay, we'll also go to the island and explore what's happening. Unbothered by the six pirates who had been ordered to stay on board, they took the ship's jolly boat and rowed ashore. So every boat has these small, small boats also with them. They took one of those boats and went exploring, all right? So um, the six pirates who had been ordered to stay on they didn't even care. They didn't bother what's happening. So these three left. They soon found out what was known as the stockade. They found something which is called a stockade. Stockade is a sturdy log cabin with loopholes for muskets in its walls. Muskets are boundary, uh, so perimeter. We will come later. Musket is an early type of gun with a long barrel. So these houses actually had holes for guns. Okay for muskets in the walls, protected by a perimeter fence of stout wooden paling. Perimeter is the area, the boundary, the perimeter of the place. And it was six feet high. Okay, So this stockade was a log cabin which had loopholes for, uh, for a gun kind, kind of a thing and was protected by a fence. These are the qualities, these are the uh, properties of a stockade which you can say. And how high was it? Six feet high it was. They decided this was a good place as any to make a stand against the pirates and hurried back to the Hispaniola for supplies. Now they said, come on, let's just come here. Let's get all our stuff from the ship and come back here. While the squire's gamekeeper, Red Ruth, kept the pirates at gunpoint, the captain and the others made several journeys ashore with provisions, arms and ammunition. So uh, the captain's gamekeeper, the boy of him, he was called Red Ruth, he had kept a gun on the pirates which were supposed to keep them inside the ship, right? So in the meantime, the doctor and all were uh, taking all the provisions, the weapons and everything to keep in this stockade. On the final trip back 
to the stockade when they were taking all the stuff everything was taken one final trip was left last trip the captain the squire and the doctor along with those still loyal to them were attacked by more of the pirates they were all attacked by more pirates when they were doing their final trip the pirates pirates lost one dead and two more injured but redruth was also shot and died soon after okay the pirates who had retreated started a bombardment from the ship's cannon so all these pirates had lots of weapons you know these big big kind of cannons and all that uh, so a cannon is this kind of a thing in which you put a big round ball kind of uh, a thing and when they shoot it from here wherever it falls it explodes that was a cannon so there were big big bombardments of cannon but as the stockade was out of the hispaniola side the balls fell well wide of their mark so uh, the stockade was little far so the bombs did not fall very close to the stockade jim and ben gun were surprised by the sound of distant cannon fire now jim and ben gun were not near it they were somewhere else but they could hear what was happening right fire jim told ben about long john silver and the pirates and asked him to go with him to his find his friends now jim said that this is what has happened he told everything about long john silver and told ben gun please come with me to find my friends Ben shook his head. He said that he knew Long John Silver from way back when they were both members of Flint's crew, and added that if Jim's friends gave him a promise of a safe passage home, then he would help them. Now Ben Gunn was here for three years. He was feeling very lonely and bad, right? So he said, "Okay, but with you and your friends, I also want to go back to my home. Will you promise me you will take me back home? Then I can help you find your friends, right?" So this was the promise Ben wanted. With that he slipped away into the undergrowth when evening fell the pirates stopped their useless bombardment the pirates were uselessly throwing bombs here and there in the evening that stopped jim approached the stockade cautiously but when he saw the union jack flying above it he knew that it was his allies who occupied it jim's friends were delighted to see him safe and sound and amazed to hear about ben gun he found his friends redruth had died but all his friends were alive so they were all very happy to see each other and when he saw the union jack flying above they knew that these are their company only they've come to get them the captain then told everyone it was time to sleep along with him the squire and the doctor there were just two more of the squire's men plus one sailor who had remained loyal these were the people who were remaining six men and a boy against the 15 pirates who still survived so what was it now six men and a boy who were the six men uh, the captain the, the captain the squire the doctor and two more of the squire's men they were remaining and how many pirates were remaining 15 pirates were remaining okay the next morning long john silver appeared at the stockade's perimeter fence carrying a flag of truce he offered to spare the defenders lives if they gave him the treasure map now he came with lots of weapons and he told that give me the treasure map only then you can go home safely captain smollett refused him point blank he said no way i'm going to give you the map saying the pirates word was not worth a rotten ship's biscuit and that they had no intention of giving up the treasure map anyway he said do whatever you want whatever you want you do we are not going to give you the treasure map no sooner had long silver hobbled angrily away than the pirates attacked the socket as soon as they said i'm not going to give you the map they all started the attack what is hobbled here children it means walked no sooner had long john silver walked angrily away the pirates attacked the stockade the defenders retreated into the log cabin from which they exchanged musket fire with the pirates even they all went and they had already taken their weapons inside the last evening so they all also started attacking so it was a fight between these people and the pirates suddenly several attackers swarmed over the perimeter fence two were shot down one retreated but four of them made it to the cabin wall where they were able to shoot in through the building loopholes at will so what did they do like you would have seen in wars and all that no slowly slowly some of the pirates came inside the perimeter and they also started shooting from the holes from which holes from the loopholes okay 
Now, realizing the tables had been turned, the defenders rushed outside and fought the pirates hand to hand. Now, captain and all thought that now it's going to get difficult. So, they all went out and they all started fighting hand to hand. A few minutes later, the pirates lay dead. But two of the squire's men had perished as well and the captain was wounded. So, after some time, they had won the fight. The captain was a little wounded. Everyone was dead except the squire's men. Only two of the squire's men were alive. While the remaining defenders buried the dead, the doctor made his way off into the woods, intent on a secret plan. Jim too had had an idea. With darkness approaching, he armed himself with a pistol and slipped away into the shadows. So Jim left with pistol in his pocket. He made his way to the seashore where he found a small homemade boat that Ben Gunn had told him about. Ben Gunn already told him there is a small houseboat there. The little craft closely resembled a coracle. What is a coracle? A small light boat is called a coracle and was very difficult to handle. But it was difficult to handle because it is small and the waves are big, isn't it, in the sea. But he succeeded in padding it out to the Hispaniola from which drunken shouting voices could be heard. Jim wasted no time cutting through the ship's mooring ropes and setting it adrift. He just left. By that time, the tide was ebbing fast and the current in the channel was very, very strong. It was high tide and with high tide, the waves are really, really big. Jim found himself swept helplessly along with it. So, Jim also went with the tide, with the waves. He also left and there was nothing that you can do when you are in between the sea. Thinking he was as good as dead, he allowed exhaustion to overwhelm him. And now uh, there was a thought in him that he's already dead. So he was very, he didn't know whether he'll be able to reach the destination or not. What's happening to him? He was really overwhelmed with it. Feelings were very high. He was very emotional at that time. The next morning, Jim awoke to find himself drifting near to the island's north coast. He had reached the island's north coast. Close by was the Hispaniola. Seemingly deserted, he hurriedly paddled over to it and clambered aboard. Clambered is climbed with difficulty. He climbed on that ship. On the ship, Jim found the two pirates whose raised voices he had heard the night before. He found those two pirates. They had obviously had a fight. One lay dead, the other had a bad wound in his thigh. So, the last night he had heard them fighting, isn't it? So, he, uh, what had happened? One was dead and one was wounded. Jim took the ship's wheel and steered for a creek. Now, he took the wheel and what is a creek? A narrow stretch of water following in from a coast. There was a narrow stretch of water which was following. He took the ship there in the north of the island where it could safely be run ashore. The surviving pirate who minutes before had seemed to be gravely wounded suddenly sprang at Jim. Now, there was one pirate who was dead. Other pirate was fine, but he was really wounded. So, within no time, he came to Jim to attack him. As the ship ran gently around, the pirate chased Jim up the main mast rigging and threw a knife at him. Knife at him. Although Jim was slightly wounded, he managed to aim his pistol and shoot his attacker dead. So, there was a little fight between Jim and that pirate. That pirate was already wounded. With knife, he attacked Jim. Jim was a little wounded, but he took his pistol and that other guy was dead. Very pleased that he had captured the ship and it was in a safe place, Jim made his way back to the stockade. He went back to the stockade. But to his horror, it was Long John Silver and the other pirates who greeted him. It was not his friends who were in the stockade now anymore. It was Long John Silver and the others. For some reason, the doctor had given it up to them along with the treasure map. Long John Silver told Jim that as he had been deserted by his friends, he should now join the pirates, but Jim refused. Now, what had happened was, the captain had given off the treasure map to Long John Silver. What did he tell him now? Jim said, now your friends have gone off now. They have left you alone. They have gone off. Why don't you join us, the pirates? Come on, you can join us as a team. But Jim refused. He said, no, I am not going to join you. Jim said that after seeing so much treachery and blood, he no longer cared for what happened to him. But he wanted the pirates to know that it was he who uncovered their plot and it was he who took the ship. He said, with whatever happened, you had a very bad plan. But it was me who 
attack the ship who have the sh who has the ship now right and i only didn't let the plan work out he wanted them to know that it was he who uncovered their plot their plan was gone because of jim correct and it was he who took the ship also now the other pirates wanted to kill him but long john silver was very impressed by his brave speech and told his men the lad would be of far more use to them as a live hostage than a dead cabin boy now they were all very impressed by jim's speech they said rather than killing him and putting him somewhere in the ship in the corner let him come alive with us he'll be more helpful okay long john silver whispered to jim that with the ship gone he was in a desperate pickle he gave jim to understand that if he were given the promise of lenient treatment he would be prepared to surrender to captain smollett so he said uh, he told jim that come on you be a little more careful okay he gave jim to understand that if he were given the promise if he jim gave him the promise that he will give him a proper treatment he would be prepared to surrender to captain smollett he will have i will surrender to the captain smollett the pirates meanwhile were very angry at losing so many men and being marooned the pirates were angry now they are all lonely and so many pirates have died already and gave long john silver the black spot now they gave long john silver the black spot that means the summons that means the agreement that he can't do anything anymore on its other side was the word deposed it that means now he is no more a pirate and who doomed the mission to failure the one legged pirate yelled at them if they had waited until after the treasure was found before mutinying then by now they would all have been rich but why did they uh, depose him before finding the treasure they should have just waited for the treasure to find everyone would have rich, been rich isn't it a little later dr levice appeared under a flag of truce and treated the wounded men and those who were now suffering from malaria he was allowed a few words with jim who told him all about taking the ship the doctor replied that he had done very well more specially in finding ben gun before leaving again he warned long john silver to beware of squalls squalls is violent cries or quarrels okay when digging up the treasure he warned long john silver of the quarrels that can happen when they are digging up the treasure after breakfast the pirates were off to find the treasure taking jim who was tied to a rope along with them jim was still very puzzled as to why the doctor had given the pirates both the stockade and the treasure map now jim was still puzzled why the doctor had given the treasure map and the good treatment what's happening the stockade also they gave they treated the pirates also the treasure map also they gave what is happening he was very puzzled but he supposed it must have been part of some plan at length following the directions of the treasure map the pirates reached a clearing in which they found a sun bleached skeleton they found a skeleton which was completely dark with the sunlight suddenly an airy voice rang out singing 15 men on a dead man's chest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum terrified the pirates stopped dead they heard this voice an eerie voice that means a very uh, scary voice what was the voice singing it was singing 15 men on a dead man's chest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum this is a pirate song and they were all very shocked even long john silver looked frightened even long john silver who claimed to be the the very creepy pirate also was frightened but then he told his men that ghost voice did not echo like that if it's a ghost their voice was not echo like this so this is not a ghost and anyway ghost or no nothing was going to keep them away from their booty the pirates moved on again and eventually caught sight of the giant tree that marked the spot where captain flint had buried the bulk of his treasure they finally reached the tree which had a mark where captain flint has buried his treasure of booty long john silver's eyes gleamed with greed greed obviously when you see something so much you want to take everything that's greed isn't it and jim knew that any promises he had made were now completely forgotten and jim knew that whatever promises he had made 
you know what did he tell he told him right jim that you be a good boy and i will take you whatever wherever whatever i will give you my share but i he knew jim that all the promises will be forgotten then the pirates let out a gasp of dismay for under the tree was a gaping hole in the ground that had obviously been dug several months ago the despairing pirates dug the earth at the bottom of the hole with their bare hands but the treasure had gone so so they could see that below the tree they could easily dig that means few months ago it has been already taken the treasure had gone there was no treasure only they did so much and found nothing then they turned on long john silver and jim accusing them of treachery but before they could do them any harm a volley of gunshots rang out two of their pirates fell to the ground dead the remaining three turned and ran for their lives so before anyone could do anything there were gunshots and what was the result of the gunshots two of the pirates fell on the ground dead two pirates died the remaining three turned and they ran away for their lives this was the result of the gunshot now dr levi say squire trilwani and ben gun stepped out of the nearby undergrowth their muskets still smoking who are these three men these three men were already there and they came out from behind the doctor told jim and long john silver that they had only reached them in time because ben had held the pirates up with his ghostly song this was ben who was singing this ghostly song as they made their way to ben gun's cave where captain smollett was recovering the doctor explained how he had gone to find ben gun so the doctor had gone to find ben gun and uh, who was recovering here captain smollett was recovering in the cave so they had already teamed up before who all have teamed up ben gun the doctor and captain smollett had already teamed up before when he learned that ben gun had already found the treasure and taken it to this cave and also saw that the ship had vanished he gave the pirates the treasure map what was the use of the treasure map now where the treasure is already discovered so they gave him the treasure map which was now useless and let him have the stockhead where he was sure they would go down with malaria and they knew that it was infected with malaria so they knew everyone is going to catch malaria very very clever of them over the next few days those who were still fit enough loaded all the treasure onto the hispaniola which was easily refloated on a high tide whoever got it just went on the ship and came back the captain on the road to recovery said that because they were so short handed they should sail to the nearby spanish americas to take on more men they did not have too many people right so they said we'll go to the spanish america we'll take little more crew on board and then we'll go the three surviving pirates were left on the island a much more human punishment than that they had planned for their victims now these three pirates were left in some island now who was supposed to get the punishment all these people but who got the punishment the pirates as the hispaniola sailed away one of them shouldered his musket and put a ball inches over long john silver's head on reaching the mainland more crew were taken on they took more men to help them cross the sail long john silver managed to slip off board taking with him some 400 in coins everyone was relieved to see the last of him everyone said okay fine he is gone just let them go what did he take he took some 400 coins with him and left the journey back to england passed without any incident very smooth sail the expedition's survivors all received an ample share of the treasure everyone got their good amount of share and while the rest used their money wisely everyone used their money very wisely jim learned that ben gun was poor again within a month ben gun whom he has rescued from there drank 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 and again he was poor in a month so he was poor ben gun again jim never had the urge to go back to the sea again especially not to the treasure island although it was said that some of the treasure still remained undug there there was still so much of more treasure undug there which was still inside the mud but no one had the you know the courage to go back to the sea in his worst nightmares he would dream of the surf breaking over the island's rock and captain phil's shrill cry pieces of fate pieces of fate he would sometimes dream of captain flint crying pieces of fate pieces of fate so here is the end of our adventure on the treasure island 
what all happened there, how it ended. Wasn't it nice? Did you sail with me to the adventure? And yes, they found the treasure and only good people found the treasure. The pirates did not find it. Let's attempt some questions before we finish this part. Why did Captain Smollett say that the odds were stacked against their survival? Of the 26 people aboard the ship, there were only 7 upon whom Captain Smollett could rely. And this made him say that the odds were stacked against their survival. Question number 19. How does Jim manage to escape to the island? When the ship was at the anchor, acting more on instinct than anything else, Jim hid himself ab abroad the boat that rowed ashore and as soon as the coast was clear, made a run for the shelter of the nearby undergrowth. That's how Jim escaped the island. Who is Ben Gen? Ben Gunn. When Jim was running away from Long John Silver, who had just then stabbed a pirate, he stopped to catch his breath and found himself facing a wild looking man dressed all in rags. He announced that he was a poor Ben Gunn who was abandoned on the boat three years before on the island. Question 21. Why and how was Ben left marooned on the island? Ben had been on Captain Flint's ship's ship when the treasure was buried. The wicked pirate had taken six men ashore with him to hide the booty and murdered them all. So its location remained a secret. Ben had returned on another ship to look for the treasure three years back but when they could not find it his shipmates had left him abandoned or marooned on the island. Question 22. Why did Captain Smollett and others consider the stockade an ideal place for them? Why was stockade that log cabin ideal for them? When they reached the shore, Captain Smollett and the others saw the sturdy log cabin with loopholes for muskets in its walls, protected by a perimeter fence of stout wooden paling, six feet high. All these are the characteristics of the sturdy log cabin, which is also called the stockade. So remember those. They decided this stockade was as good as a place as any to make a stand against the pirates. It seemed perfect for them. Question 23. What was Silver's demand for a truce? What was Captain Smollett's response? What did Captain Smollett respond to it? So John Silver offered to spare the defender's life if they gave him the treasure map. Captain Smollett refused him point blank saying the pirate's word was not worth a rotten ship's biscuit. Whatever they say, they don't come up to it. You know, it's like one biscuit which is spoilt. Their word is also like that. And that they had no intention of giving up the treasure map anyway. Question 24. What was the result of the attack of the pirates on the stockade? Why did the pirates attack the stockade? When the pirates attacked the stockade, the defenders retreated into the log cabin from which they exchanged musket fire with the pirates. Okay, there was a fight between the pirates. Suddenly, several attackers swarmed over the perimeter fence. Two were shot down. One retreated, but four of them made it to the cabin wall where they were able to shoot in through the building's loopholes at will. Realizing the tables had been turned, the defenders rushed outside and fought the pirates hand to hand. They all had a hand to hand fight. A few minutes later, the pirates lay dead, but two of the squire's men had perished as well and the captain also was wounded. Question 25. What surprise awaited Jim when he returned to the stockade? Very pleased that he had captured the ship and taken it to safe place, Jim made his way back to the stockade. But to his horror, it was Long John Silver and the pirates who greeted him. For some reason, the doctor had given it up to them along with the treasure map. Now you all know the story. Why was the treasure map given it back to them? Question 26. Give any two examples of Jim's act of bravery. How was Jim brave? Give me examples. One act of bravery was shooting down his attacker dead on board the Hispaniola, right? And the second act was that of revealing to John Silver that the other pirates, that it was he who had uncovered their plot and it was he who had taken the ship. Question 27. On what condition was Silver willing to surrender to Captain Smollett? Silver was willing to surrender to Captain Smollett if he was given the promise of lenient treatment. That means proper treatment. Question 28. Why did the pirates serve the back spot on silver? 
the pirates were very very angry at losing so many men and being abandoned or marooned and so gave long john silver the black spot so here the black spot was given to long john silver at the end everything happened very nicely good things happened at the end and that's how the treasure was divided between good people yes but ben gunn did not use it wisely so whenever you get any treasures in life use it wisely how was the treasure island trip with me it was nice yes it was wonderful going on the treasure island i loved every bit of this adventure and i hope you have understood this entire lesson take it as a very nice interesting story remember the characters and it will be very easy for you so i sign out here but please uh, i make sure i will come back with another interesting chapter bye bye kashish chug signing out